on pages three to five. The first question tells us that floppy disk can store this many bytes of data and it asks us to write it in standard form. Standard form is always a number between one and 10, but less than 10. So I'm going to rewrite the 144 in that form, putting a decimal point after the first number. Now I need to work out what and multiply because that's standard form and I have six digits after the first one so I times it by 10 to the power of six. Question 1b calculating the number of floppy disks needed to store this many bytes of data. I'm dividing because it's asking me to calculate how many floppy disks I need so I'm going to divide 2.4 times 10 to the power of 9 divided by 1.44 times 10 to the power of 6. So I'm going to use my calculator for this calculation. And the reason why is because I can't divide this so easily. So I'm going to put this on my calculator. 2.44 and then I'm pressing this button down at the bottom to tell the calculator it's standard form to the power of 9 divided by 1.44 to the power of, so press that button again, 6 equals. It's come up as a fraction, so I'm going to press the S to D button, which changes it into decimal. And I have 169.4. Now, I want to know, it needs to cut, um, store all of the data, so my final answer will be 1695, because that 0.44 pieces of data will still need and storing. Question number two. I've been asked to write this in standard form, a number between one and ten, so the only digit I can use is that one. And this is a very small number, so we know it's a negative. There's lots of zeros at the beginning, and that also tells me that it's a negative power because it's really small. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. So it's 1 times 10 to the negative 9. It tells us that a computer can do a calculation, so that is one calculation in 5 nanoseconds. How many of these calculations can the computer do in one second? Right, so we're going to need to do a division again. So we're going to do a division. We know that one calculation takes in five nanoseconds. So five nanoseconds is going to be five times this. So that is five times 10 to the negative nine. It says how many? So that is going to be a division. So it's one, because we want to work out how many they do in one second, divided by five times 10 to the negative nine. Again, I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to type in one divided by five press the standard form button, I'm going to press the negative button, not the subtraction, the negative button, 9 equals. And I get an answer of 2, and then I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm just double checking that I've got the right amount of zeros, recounting them, and I have. It asks me to put my answer in standard form. So in standard form, it is a number between 1 and 10, but less than 10, times 10, and then you count how many digits there are after the first one, and there are 8. Right, let's move on. Question 3. Ask us to write this in standard form. So we write down a number between 1 and 10, which is 4, times 10, because that lets the reader know it's standard form, and we count how many digits there are after the question 3a part 2 asks us to write that as an ordinary number. That is a number that we recognise and use every day. It is a negative power, which means the zeros are at the beginning. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because the power of 5. Then I need to put my 3 in, but I need to put my decimal point in, because a negative power indicates a very small number. So my decimal point goes after the first zero. Next question. So these are in 
mixture units, one's in standard form, one's in an ordinary number. So I'm now going to make sure that the second number is in standard form, which is 4 times 10 to the power of 7. We did it, completed that calculation in the first part. So we're going to do 3 times 10 to the negative 5 times 4 times 10 to the 7. We're going to do 3 times 4, which is 12. And then, because we are dealing with indices with the same base, we are going to add the powers. Negative 5, add 7, is 2. But this isn't in standard form, because this number isn't a number between 1 and 10. So we're going to rewrite it as a number between 1 and 10. And then we put times 10. There is one number after the first one. And then we continue with the calculation. So this becomes 1.2 times 10 to the power of 3. Right, let's move on to question number 4. So question number 4 is asking us to work these out in standard form. It is quite a tricky question. It's asking us to round it to two significant figures. We're going to use our calculator. I'm going to type it in 3.2. And now we need to put in the times 10 button and raise it to the power of 5, five, five times 10 to the power button and then put in the power of 4 equals. And we get an answer of 1.44 times 10 to the power of 10. Significant figures. So we want two from the beginning because those are the most significant figures with the highest place value. We check the next number. If it is less than five, we round it down. So it's 1.4 times 10 to the power of 10. You get one mark for working out your calculation, one mark for rounding to two significant figures. Let's move on to question five. We've had this question, a uh, similar question before. 4, because we need a number between 1 and 10, times 10, because that's what we do for standard form, and then we count the digits after the first one, so it's to the power of 7. We're going to write this in an ordinary form. It is a negative, which means it's a very small number, and the zeros are at the beginning. We need five zeros. Then we put in the 1, 4, and now we need to put the decimal point in after the first zero. Now, this one would be used with a calculator because the calculations are quite easy to do. I can see I'm doing 5 times 6, which is 30. And then I'm going to multiply 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 9. When we multiply indices with the same basis, we add the powers. Now, 30 is not a number in standard form, so we rewrite it so it is in standard form. Now, my answer is 3 times 10 to the power of 1 times 10 to the power of 13, combining two parts. That doesn't look right. So we're going to multiply those indices together. And remember, we add the power. So this is 3 times 10 to the 14. One mark for doing the correct multiplication. One mark for writing it in standard form. OK, let's move on to question 6. We need a number between 1 and 10, so it's 4.56. We count how many digits there are after the first one. There are five. This is a very small number, so we know it's going to be a negative power. We write a number between 1 and 10, so it's 3.4, and we count how many zeros there are. Four. This is an in standard form, so we need to write the 16 in standard form. And then we copy out the times 10 to the power of 7. We are multiplying, so we add the powers. So it is 1.6 times 10 to the power of 8. OK, let's move on. Question number 7, we're asked to write this as an ordinary number. So we're going to start with, it's a negative, so my zeros are at the beginning. 1, 2, 3, 4, because it's power of 4. Then I write in the 5 and the 7. And my decimal point goes in after the first zero. Question 7b. I can do this without a calculator. I'm going to do 7 times 3 is 21. 
And then I'm going to do 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 5, which is 10 to the power of 9. 21 isn't in standard form, so it's 2.1 times 10 to the power of 1. And I can see that my answer will be 2 times 10 to the power of 10, because I'm adding the powers. Four more questions to complete. Let's move on to the last page. So we're on question number 8. We're writing that number in standard form, so it's a number between 1 and 10. Standard form times 10. Count the number of digits after the first one, and there's seven. Question B, it is a negative power, so the zeros go at the beginning. There are three zeros. I'll look to see how many digits I'm writing. I'm just writing the number two, but I can't forget the decimal point. Question number nine, I've got to write a number between one and 10, making sure my decimal point is clear. Times 10, because that's what standard form means. And now I need to count how many digits there are after the first one. There are three. This is a very small number because it begins with zero point. So I write times 10 to the power of a negative. I count how many zeros there are. There are four. And now I need to put the number at the beginning. So it's 3.5. Next question. Now this, although it looks a little bit tricky, would be still in my non-calculator method. I've got 4 divided by 8. Now I've kept it as that because I can see that is a half, which is 0 0.5. Quite often if you write it as 4 divided by 8, you might, might write 2 as an answer and that would be an error. Then we've got 10 to the power of 3 divided by 10 to the power of negative 5. We're dividing, so we subtract the powers. I'm subtracting a negative, so that is the same as add. So this becomes 10 to the power of 8. 0 0.5 isn't in standard form, so I'm now going to put it in standard form. So it is 5 times 10 to the negative 1, because it begins with a 0. Now the final bit is going to be combining those two powers. So negative 1, add 8, becomes 7. Okay, question number 10. This question will be put on to a calculator paper. So we're going to make sure we press the fraction button first. Then we're going to type it in as we see it. So we've got 2 times 2.2 .2 standard form button 12 times 1.5 standard form button 12. We use the arrow key to move it down to the denominator. And we're going to type in the denominator. 2.2, standard form button 12. Subtract 1.5, standard form button 12. Check that it looks identical, then press the equal sign. We've got 9.428515. Four two nine times 10 to the power of 12. So far, I've got two marks. Now, if in the exam you write your answer to your numerator or your answer to the denominator, you get your first mark. And I need to write it to three significant figures. So one, two, three. Look to the next number. If it is five or more, we round it up. So we're rounding that. 2 up to a 3, so it becomes 9.43 times 10 to the power of 12. Last question. Doing really well. We want to write this as an ordinary number. So we write 64, and then remember, the 4 tells me I've got 4 digits after the first one. There's the first digit, second, third, fourth. We'll replace the empty spaces with zeros. Question B. We've got zeros at the beginning, so we know it's times 10 to the negative. We've got three zeros, so it's negative three, and then we can't forget 3.9 at the beginning. Last question. We need to write that in standard form, so that is 2.5 times 10 to the negative one, 
times 10 to the power of 7. So my final answer will be 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6 because I add my indices. Thank you very much.